Hi, I'm Jay Wilgus Esquire from Public Service Broadcasting. Welcome to Blue Dot. We were here two years ago for the first one and managed to have a day off, so I kind of think we've got a reasonable handle on what, you know, the sort of the ethos of Blue Dot and how it tries to blend, you know, more straightforward kind of music and standard festival fare with a lot of talks and a lot of um, sort of science-based exploration and, and learning and, and sort of celebrating all that science has to offer as well as all that arts and entertainment have to offer and it's not it's not often enough that those two things cross over um, so I think it's really to be applauded and, and I think the crowd seem to really appreciate it too it seems to be like the best of both worlds. I think if you look at it purely mathematically I think there has to be if you, if you think the universe is practically infinite and expanding all the time then there's there's just there's no way there can't be a similar planet to ours somewhere without some form of life on it um you know it looks like they might end up finding life on i can't remember which of saturn's moon as it is but you know the one that's frozen with water beneath the surface they think there's evidence of bacteria on mars or microbial organisms i think i think it's inevitable that we're going to find something i don't think it's going to be you know war of the worlds type stuff hopefully <laughs> um but yeah there's got to be something out there there has to be I think the thing that looking up in the night sky gives you is, is perspective and, and an understanding of how small and insignificant you are as a, as a temporary organism here, <laughs> a tiny blip of time, you know, compared to the grand scheme of things. So um, it's always good to get perspective, really, as long as it doesn't make you too depressed. But that's, you know, that's one of the best ways to get perspective because you, you get to do it while at the same time marvelling at how, how beautiful and fortunate we are to be, how beautiful this world is and how fortunate we are to be here and, and also how endlessly incomprehensible to the average mind the universe is so it's uh, it's, it's very humbling it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. It's, it's quite hard to picture a beautiful future for the earth at the moment because so few governments and organizations seem to want to face up to what they need to face up to which is that climate change is happening at a very advanced pace and is going to be something that needs to be addressed sort of 10 years ago really uh, you know we needed to start then um, I think it's it's going to take a real drive from countries all over the world and especially the, the so-called kind of advanced civilizations the ones who are supposed to be driving humanity forwards rather than taking them backwards like certain of our Western Atlantic cousins at the moment um, so it's it's hard to see particularly positive future when you kind of get bogged down in the nitty gritty but at the same time you have to have faith that humanity will find a way to make it work and find a way to survive. I just hope we do it um, as soon as possible really so that we don't lose too much in the meantime. Um, I think you'd have to pick something that was already stood the test of time you know one of the sort of the great classical pieces of music something with a great deal of complexity and, and a lot of layers to it so that it would really warrant examination over and over again if it was ever discovered by some kind of foreign civilization um, or extraterrestrial civilization so you know without wanting to be blinding obvious you know one of Beethoven's symphonies or something like that or my favorite piece of music ever I think is Cavalleria Rusticana by Mascani so I'd, I'd say stick that on a satellite and send it send it out the solar system see where you get to I kind of feel, I don't really feel like it was a choice to combine all these influences under the sort of the mantle of, of public service broadcasting. I feel it's like it's more just a distillation of, of uh, you know, living life, I suppose, and getting to age 30 before this all kind of like started to come together as, as a thing. Um, I suppose it's a representation of a lot of my interests and a lot of, uh, a lot of the things that, you know, that I care about and sort of want to see either recognised or celebrated. And, um, yeah, just, it, it's kind of like, a weird little niche and every sort of facet of it every facet of it kind of respect uh, reflects part of your personality so it's it's weird you don't want to say something sort of very west coasty but it's not like chose to do it it's more like it chose us does that that doesn't don't know if that makes sense but it's it's not like any of this was that active a choice it feels like it was the thing to do so it just kind of happened i think the biggest influence science fiction wise and, and it doesn't deserve pigeonholing in that bracket because it's such a, an amazing piece of art but um, 2001 is just um, it's just a, a beautiful film on every level technically incredible visually incredible spiritually and kind of a you know it, it makes you ask all kinds of questions and it doesn't give you the answers which is one of the things I like about 
intelligent sort of grown up films like that they don't have to dress everything up uh, but there's, there's all kinds of films in the sci-fi world that, that appeal to me greatly you know Blade Runner would be another one mostly for the sort of the visual side of things but I think 2001 as, as a complete piece of art is just is, is unparalleled and unequalled Well, it's funny we're here playing with the Flaming Lips today, actually. We've, we've played with them a couple of times before, but I remember going to a gig of theirs at Rock City in Nottingham in about, it must be 2001 after Soft Bulletin, and just looking around the room and seeing everybody sort of, everybody just looked really happy. It was just like a sea of beaming faces, and, and thinking if I was ever in a band, wouldn't it be great to kind of get that same sense of, of togetherness and kind of positivity and, and spreading that kind of that kind of feeling of happiness amongst a, a group of people. And, and I hope that that's kind of what people take out of the, the whole of our show. It's not without its kind of ups and downs in terms of some of the more difficult subject matter it touches on, especially in the light of the recent album. But um, overall, I think it represents a kind of a positive view and celebration of humanity and all that humanity has achieved and, and can achieve. And it's nice to be kind of spreading that kind of message and hopefully generating those kind of feelings. And hopefully that's what we'll do today. Um, I'd say thanks for coming, thanks for being part of making it work and thanks for showing people that these things can be combined in this way and um, you know, for being part of such an inspiring event, it's great.